All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, functional programming, learn about functional programming. All right. So before we get into this, let me tell you something I just learned after doing these, doing the first two of these. This isn't this isn't the functional we know. We, the outsiders of programming, know. It's not like, oh, it works. No, this functional is talking about functions. It's functional program talking about function, programming talking about functions, all right? So let's get into it and I'll show you what's the deal. So functional programming is a style of programming where solutions are simple, isolated functions without any side effects outside of the function scope. So the imp so it's going to have an input and then a process and then it's going to push out an output. So functional programming is about isolated functions. So there is no dependence on the state of the program, which includes global variables that are subject to change. So if this right here equal to if this was a variable instead of a function, it would not be functional programming. That's basically what this is saying. So pure functions, the same input always gives the same output. So no matter what we put into this thing, if it's 27 or 50 or whatever, it's always going to give us 27, 50 or whatever, right? Uh, and then functions with limited side effects. So any changes or mutations to the state of the program outside the function are carefully controlled, right? So there's not many changes or mutations that happen to the function, right? I guess that's what that's saying. So the members of Free Code Camp happen to love T, right? In the code editor, the prepare T and get T functions are already defined for us. We're going to call the get T function to get 40 cups of T for the team and store them in the T for team FCC variable. All right. So let's get to it. So basically, we could change this stuff up to like, let me show you. Let me show you. This, this is the way we, we learned so far. All right. Let me get rid of some of this stuff so that we can just... Uh, so I can give you an example, right? So the way we would have done this so far is change this to I, change this to I, and change this to I, and change this to plus plus. And then we have this, we would make this result. And this would be result. And then teacup, I guess that's fine. Uh, and then teacups would also be result, all right? And teacup, well, no, we don't even need teacup. We get rid of that. We can just have the string green T. All right. And then we come down here and say, and we wouldn't even need to do that. We would just say console.log uh, get T 40. All right. And it would do this. And that would basically be the answer. Uh, if we were to do something like this, get T 40, get T 40, it would work, right? But the thing is, that's not functional programming. This is something, this is just simple. This is how we learned how to program, but this isn't what you do in the workplace at all. This is, I, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure this is what hackers would love to see. Uh, <laughs> it's just some simple crap. So let's go back to the beginning and go through this functionally, right? So basically, uh, the function that returns, so this thing is a function that returns a string representing a cup of green tea. So instead of having a variable, like it says here, uh, we're going to have this as a function like that. All right. So I guess it's so it's harder to change or something. All right. So given a function representing the tea type and number of cups needed, the following function returns the, pardon me, returns an array of strings, each representing a cup of a specified, pardon me, specific type of tea. So we already saw what it's going to look like. It's going to be an array with uh, green tea all through it 40 different times, right? So this is already the function, okay? This works. All we have to do is the function call. So all we have to do is say, uh, what, is, what are we doing? We're doing get t num no, 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 40, all right? And that will work. But let's go through this anyway. So... We're going to have const get t equals num of cups, all right? So that's the 27 or the 40 or whatever, right? So we're going to have const t cups 
equals this. And we do this instead of results so that people that come in later will know that this is teacups and not just a generic result that you have to guess what's going on, right? Right here, we have cups instead of I because I is generic and cups is specific. And then we also have this plus equals one. And I'm just guessing here. I guess we have this just in case people don't know that you can do plus plus with JavaScript and they've only seen stuff like, I don't know, C plus plus or whatever before, you know? Uh, so now we've got the const teacup equals prepare tea. So this, so this here equals this function up here, all right? Uh, and then we've got the teacups dot push teacup. So for whatever reason, I will probably figure this out in later lessons. We want to put this in there instead of uh, the instead of just the function that we put up there. I guess it's because now we know that tea, that this makes one t cup of tea or something like that. And then we're going to return tea cups, which is the array right here. OK, and so that's basically how that goes. And like we said before, we say uh, con soul.log instead of saying get t40 we're going to actually log the variable t for team fcc all right and you see it does the 40 green t's right there so the reason we do this i mean yeah it looks a little more verbose but it's also a little bit easier to understand if you're coming in here from off the streets and they're saying hey change my code we can go in here and we can say, oh, OK, we know that this is teacups and this is teacup and blah, 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 blah. Hopefully you get it. So now let's run the test. Looks good and submit it. All right. So now we're on to understand functional programming terminology and we'll see you next time.